The red error codes that come up on the X30, X35 can be used to diagnose problems with the system that it's working with. So on the monitor, you're going to see one of these errors come up. So these errors that come up on the screen, they're going to say urgent and they're going to be red. It's going to tell us that it's a CM41 hardware error. So there's a problem with the master ECU in this case because that is CM41. It's also going to give us the code. That's the 0x10004. And it says to power cycle the ECU. When it flashes off like that, that's it trying to reset itself. We can view these on the monitor, what the breakdown is, by pressing the information button. Just slide the information tab down. Easier to see that many view in that case. There's an information button with the three little triangles in a row. And when we press that information button, that's going to bring up the trouble codes that have come up in the monitor. So the no GPS K strain one are ones because we don't have those hooked up in our simulation, but we're looking for the hardware error. So you can see we have the hardware that gives you the same information, the CM41, hardware error, and the error code. If we scroll down, it's going to tell us ECU error state, power error, and it's going to give you the power error flags, sensor 12 volt fault, which means we have a problem with the sensors on, or one sensor on CM41, the master. The little number down there that says times in brackets is the ECU trying to reset itself. So at this point, it's tried to reset itself six times from the time that the first error came up. So we're back at the ECUs for the tank. That's where the master will be. And we can see that we have two of our ECUs, solid green lights, and our CM41, our master, is flashing red and greens. That's because we now have a hardware error. So we'll go around to the other side of the ECU now. And because it's a sensor, we know that it's going to be on one of the channels or on the master, it could be on the auxiliary as well. So we have channel one, channel two, channel three, and channel four, and our auxiliary plug on this side. So the easiest way to determine which one of these five wires has the error would be just simply unplug those five harnesses. So we'll just do that quick. Simply unplug them. And just try and remember or label them which one so you're not, you get them plugged in back right when you plug them back in. I'm just laying them on the floor here in order. One more tank harness out of the channels. And because we have sensors on the auxiliary, you also want to make sure you unplug that as well. So now we want to reset the ECU. It's power cycle. You don't have to run back to the monitor and turn it off. All you have to do is go to your ECU breakout and simply break that power connection to turn the power off to the ECUs, which will reset them. Plug that back in. You'll be able to watch your lights on your ECUs when they become solid green, that hardware error is gone because we've got all the sensors unplugged. So you simply have to wait until the lights turn green. You don't have to go back up to the monitor to see if that error comes back up again because the lights and the ECUs will tell you themselves. So we're just waiting a second here until they all go green again. This doesn't take very long, but it is easier than running back up. They just have to resynchronize with the monitor because we broke the mask off of the system and reset it so then everything has to get back online. So now we've got our green lights back on. So now you're right at the ECU, you can start plugging those channels back in. We've got our green lights, we know that our air is gone. So we're just going to start plugging them back in. As long as you plug them back in where they came from, it doesn't matter which one you plug in first. I'm going to plug the auxiliary back in first. Plug that in and my lights are still green. I know it's not on that auxiliary harness, so I don't have to worry about unplugging the sensors. I'm going to do channel 4, which is tank 4. I plug it in. Check my lights. They're all still green. And it'll happen immediately as soon as the harness with the bad sensors plug back in. Channel 3. We're still green. We're still good. Channel 2. 
Paint tube. Plug it back in. Nothing coming up yet. So we get to channel one. And I'm assuming this is where we'll find our air. Yep, so as soon as we plug that back in, we've lost our green lights, and now we've got the red flashing again, so we know it's in that harness. So if, well now what we can do is we go back and we unplug the sensors on that harness. So we'll just simply go back to where our sensors are plugged in. You're going to have a speed sensor. That'll be at the end of your metering auger. Unplug it. Unplug your bin level sensor. And on a 9,000 or a 7,000 fifth tank, you want to make sure you unplug the pressure sensor or that tank that tells you the pressure in the tank, because it is a sensor as well. Got our three sensors unplugged. The BWM isn't a sensor, it's just a control, so it doesn't need to be unplugged. So now we can go back to our ECU stack, and what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to power cycle that ECU again. So simply break that connection at your ECU breakout again. Unplug. There's no set time. As soon as you plug it back in, it's going to start trying to find those ECUs because they're getting power again. So we just have to wait for it to synchronize again. And if you were plugging them back in and you got to the second channel and that harness was bad, there could be multiple sensors on there that are no good. Chances are slim, but it could happen. You could break this and then plug in the first, unplug the second one, break it, plug the first one back in, and then you'd know if you're dealing with multiple sensors or not. Okay, so we got our lights back on. So now we want to start plugging those sensors back in. We know it's not in the harness going back there, so it's not our channel harness, because the air didn't come back. It's got to be one of the sensors. If you unplugged all the sensors and you still had that alarm, it's in that harness, not in the sensor itself. The other way to do that, to verify if it was the harness, is you could swap 2 to 1 or 1 to 2 or any number of combinations there, except the auxiliary because it's different plugs. So now we're going to go back and we're going to start plugging those sensors back in. And after we plug each one in, we're going to check to make sure that our ECU hasn't gone offline. So we're going to go back and just start plugging them in one at a time. And the order of this doesn't matter. I'm going to plug in my pressure sensor first. Then we go and we check our ECU to see what our lights are doing. They're all still green. We're going to plug in our bin level sensor. Then we want to check our ECU again. They're all still green. Then you want to plug in your speed sensor. Plug in our speed sensor, and we got it failed. So now if you want to diagnose for sure that it's a speed sensor, unplug this speed sensor, and unplug the speed sensor from the channel beside it. Reset that, and then you can take a speed sensor, they're all exactly the same, and plug it in in this place to see if that alarm goes away, then you verified it's the sensor. So it's very easy to use those alarms for the red alarms to figure out what you need to fix. If you've got a power alarm for one of the ECUs, it's going to tell you that you have bad power. If you've got multiple ECUs, it'll give you a listing underneath the red alarm.